running things in the midfield, had the game winner to get the Seminoles back to this national championship game. Off we go from Stephen Stadium in Santa Clara, the Florida State Seminoles in white, the BYU Cougars in blue. And pretty quickly, Jody Brown's gonna try to show that she can test a back line too up there for Florida State number 10. And that's exactly what Jody Brown will do with her pace. Jamaican women's national team player, nine different countries outside of the United States represented on this Florida State team. And Jody Brown is gonna stretch that back line of BYU with her speed. Emily Madrill, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year at center back for the Seminoles, really big in terms of her playmaking as well as her defense. Claire Robbins, two-time ACC Tournament MVP as the Seminoles have won the last two conference championships. Heather Payne, who got the start tonight for Florida State, creates an early corner kick for her team. And here's Robbins finding Jody Brown in that seam. Heather Payne getting forward. Good defense though by Vaca. She slides over on that one. I want to remember it was a Jenna Nicewanger corner kick that led to Florida State's only goal in the semifinal. Nicewanger into the box. There was a touch, but not a really clean one. Still, it does go out of bounds without too much danger. Head coach for the BYU Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood, in her 27th season. What a special occasion this has to be for her. Starting this program and now making it here, taking this step that the program has never taken before, getting to the College Cup, and not only that, getting the chance to play for a national championship now. Yes, yeah, six Sweet 16s, three Elite Eights. They've come close so many times for BYU. And here they are in their first final. Here is Tucker and Akulahan, the dynamic duo for the Cougars. Forced back to Shepard. Jamie Shepard, the sophomore, really holds things down in the midfield for this BYU team that likes to run at you and put some pressure on. Tucker got herself turned around. Three defenders around her, still manages to pop it over to McKaylee Moore, number three. Jody Brown now with a chance in transition. Had Beata Olsen, but well covered there by Lavinia Vaca defensively for BYU. Heather Payne, the Irish international. This is just her 11th appearance of the season, and she's been out quite a bit on international duty. Let's get your Saudis focus for this evening, Julie, for Florida State's in peace. Yeah, and they're going to want to, as they're doing right now, dictate tempo with their possession. This is a possession-based style. BYU wants to play disruptive defense, but they're going to want to keep it and hold it. The other one is match BYU's intensity. They come flying at you, Mark Corian saying, we have to match that to have a chance in this game. Some pressure here from Florida State, pushing the Cougars a little deeper. Nice water, takes it over, has the shot, but puts it over the crossbar. Jenna Nicewanger getting the start this year. The first thing when you ask Mark Krikorian, who is his, his least recognized player who doesn't get enough recognition, he says number two, Jenna Nicewanger, and that's why. She picks, picks up balls all over the place on both sides of the ball. A little press by Florida State winning the ball back. And it, and it looks to me, Jen, like they've switched systems a little bit for Florida State. They might be playing a 4-4-2 with Payne in the midfield with Jody Brown and Beata Olsen up top. We'll look at how they're shaping up. But the, mind you, BYU playing in that diamond four in the midfield. So could be trying to match numbers in midfield. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. So typically Florida State 4-3-3 is what they've consistently played most of the season. Their goalkeeper, Christina Roque, had it there for a moment. She has had a tremendous performance when called upon in this NCAA tournament. Tied her season high with four saves the last couple of games for Mark Krikorian. As his team back here in this national championship for the 
seeking their third title, having won it 2014 and 2018. Gabby Carl on that far side defensively just plays it out of bounds, not taking any chances. Won a gold medal with Canada at the Olympics this summer in Tokyo. Olivia Smith with the throw in for the Cougars. Brown has it in the middle for Florida State. You can really see, we've seen on both ends now, right, Julie, how each team is trying to funnel the ball into a certain part of the field when they choose to apply that pressure to those backs. Let's get some keys. Your Foudy's focus for BYU tonight. Well, I think one of the things they, they have to do, because this is a Florida State team that loves to hold and play pretty soccer, is they're going to want to disrupt that possession, whether it's through their press, whether they're sending numbers. Uh, and the second thing is they, they felt, as BYU, they didn't get in line enough against Santa Clara in that semifinal, didn't get in behind them, and they're going to have to really try and get some numbers in behind and get in the box. More touches in the box was one of the things Jim Rockwood said to us. Yeah, she really gave a lot of credit too to Santa Clara, who's the defending national champs playing here on their home field in the semifinal against BYU. Those two teams co-champions of the West Coast Conference in the regular season. They kind of figured things out on how to quiet this incredible BYU attack. Wound up going down in penalty kicks in the end. Howell and Shepard, those two really key for their respective teams and how the ball plays through the midfield. Cougars scoring goals and a lot of them on their road here to this national championship game up until that semifinal, which was 0-0. Both teams with some chances. BYU had a ball go off the post early on. Coolahan. Always under so much pressure. Does get it through for Tucker. BYU strikes first. Wait a minute. We've got a flag. Looked like Cam Tucker had given the Cougars the lead, but let's see offside the call. And this is exactly what BYU loves to play. A little bounce off Moore. Coolahan threading it to Tucker. Let's see with this angle here. This is the better look. Uh, that's hard to tell from there, but it, it, it looks like her shoulder could be in an offside position. Hard without VAR. I think it's a good call by the referee, but that's the sequence BYU is looking for. Coolahan bouncing it, getting it back, playing Tucker in. It's one they've worked to a formula between Coolahan and Tucker threading those balls in. And Florida State knows if Tucker is faced up and running at you, you are in trouble. Santa Clara. Again, as you said, Jen, to their credit, never really gave Tucker the opportunity to run at them. And so you've got to be very careful. Number 20 for BYU up front. Her pace, her willingness to go at that back line. And when she gets that ball on her right foot, there is no stopping her. Pain. Getting into the starting lineup. Seen Mark Kerkorian very strategically making some changes to his lineup the last couple of matches. Came for this one, he had Ron EY, Japanese international, just make her second start of the season in the semifinal on Friday. Oh, Robin's on it now. 
Robbins trying to get out of this area and having some difficulty doing so. Kendall Peterson doing the work defensively for BYU. And I think what Krikorian has done tactically, he's put Payne on the right side and Gabby Cora on the left in that wing back position. So he's playing with three center backs, Madrill in the middle, Lynn on the left, and Pavlisko on the right. Wing backs and then that two front. That's what he's done against BYU to try and balance out that diamond in the midfield and play with a little more width. Is there an area you think, Julie, that that leaves them at all vulnerable with, with that formation? With, with Florida State? Yeah. Well, it depends how much you want to fly those wing backs. Here's one of them, Payne, going on that right side. Yeah, she's been covering a lot of ground here early and involved in both defending and in the attack. Bianca Olsen hits it behind Jody Brown. And that's where the chess match plays in because you you start going to a three back now with those two forwards, but you have a really good three, three back in terms of the ability for Florida State's three back to set play, especially in Emily Madrid. She will do the player on the ball right now most of the setting of play. It comes less from Jalen Howe and more from that center back position. So there's three, Pavlisko on the right, Madrill in the middle, Lauren Flynn, the third of those three center backs for Florida State. And as you said, Carl on the left, Payne on the right. Emily Madrill has been such a key piece of this Florida State team. And boy, did she have to wait her time when the Seminoles won the national championship last in 2018. She missed that season, was out with injuries, she wound up missing the next season with injury as well. So making the most of it since being able to come back now the last couple of years and all American for the Seminoles. Such a smart player as well. <laughs> this is what we've got going on here, people. I mean, BYU has traveled here to Santa Clara. Team that is led the nation in attendance in five of the last six years in the fall season. And they sure do know how to go on the road as well. Payne. Nice Wonger. Cougars take it away. Can they make something of it? Catch the Seminoles in transition. Brecken Mozingo number five will slow it down. Tucker again with a chance to run at the goal. Lauren Flynn getting on that side, a little bit of a tug there, which is what they're calling. Flynn, a sophomore in that back line for Florida State from Arlington, Virginia. Good sense is going to have her hands full, and the likes of Tucker running at her tonight, but did well there. And it's Coolahan. Olivia Wade. Robbins steps in to win it for Florida State. Brown, Olsen in the middle, nice one on the far side. Brown, three goals in this NCAA tournament run for the Seminoles. All three defenders for Florida State were right in that exact same area of the field. This is the 27th annual Jimmy V Classic at Madison Square Garden this year. And tomorrow night on ESPN and the ESPN app will have Texas Tech taking on number 13 Tennessee and their balanced attack at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then old rivals square off. Number 6 Villanova and Syracuse. To donate to the Jimmy V, v Foundation, go to v.org. First corner kick of the match now for BYU. They do lead the nation in corner kicks over the course of this season. They average nearly 10 per match. Howell, so good in the air, offensively or defensively. Watch this left foot of Mozingo. She'll get it back from Smith. 
Brecken Mazingo, transfer from UCLA. Stepped up, made her penalty kick in the shootout. And it was a shootout, by the way, that saw BYU miss or, or fail, one miss, one save, on their first two shooters in that shootout. And they still have the fortitude to come back and win. And, and not just your first two shooters, but two of your key rock-type players who yeah. take penalty kicks all the time in Coulihan and Shepard. And yet they weren't phased. It just doesn't seem like this BYU team is phased by the moment, which you love to see. Peterson, out of bounds. BYU record of 17, four and two. Eight, one and oh in the West Coast Conference. Their only loss to Santa Clara. Consider that avenged. As they took down the Broncos on Friday night. Carl, looking a nice longer for the connection, did get it back. Bullahan all the way back defending. Not typically a part of the game plan for BYU. They like to keep her right up there, closer to the attack as much as they can. Florida State will love the fact that Coulihan's having to defend in her own box. And that's the good play of Gabby Carl that created so much of that coming from that left wing back position. Peterson. BYU wanted to keep the ball. Our referee JC Griggs says it'll go the other way. Throw in Florida State. In these first 15 minutes, you can see the tactic BYU wants in this first half is get Tucker in and running. Had that success on the goal call back. Looked like she was a hair offside. But that's where a lot of their success this season has come from as well, of course. Foul called as Payne went to the ground. That's Petey, as they call her. Peterson coming in on that tackle. Yuji Zhao, an All-American for the Seminoles, getting ready to come in. But first, Madrill will have plenty of options, just about everybody up for Florida State. And she ready to take this free kick. Into the box it goes, Robbins couldn't get her head to it. Second ball to Brown. Madrill. An attacking player growing up. Now an ACC Defensive Player of the Year. First team All-American this year for the Seminoles. Shepard wanted to turn. Howell right there to greet her. Wade. Had a step on Payne. Wade. Finds it away across right at the penalty spot. It is cleared, but not all the way. Coolahan now. Bouncing ball that will go easily for Roquet. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Buick, the official SUV of the NCAA. Christina Roquet, just a sophomore, plays well beyond her years. She was a starting goalkeeper last season as well when florida state made it all the way to the ncaa championship game wound up losing in penalty kicks to santa clara and this year she split time during the regular season with mia justice an up-and-coming young goalkeeper who's on her way to the up upcoming U usu 20 camp so those two shared some time but when Roque has been in there Oof, she's been so good. good, and it's been her all the way in the postseason, ACC and NCAA tournament. 
And you could argue she was the player of the match in that semifinal oh, yeah. against Santa Clara, but you could argue that that game-saving save against Amir Ali was one for the ages. That one, she was going, it was going away from her, down low. Mark Kokorian said, and she's just so steady. You really see, you can see both personality types. I know. Steady. I know. You, sometimes you <laughs> have the steady goalkeeper. goalkeeper. <laughs> sometimes you get the more fiery, passionate. I would say it's 80 20 fiery, passionate for goalkeepers. <laughs> the best of ways. I'll give you that. Brown did keep it in. Howell. Had Tucker flying in behind her, kept her composure. Tucker then committing the foul against Lauren Flynn. You, you just have to be careful if you're yeah. BYU, because there's only so many set piece opportunities around Florida State's box that you give them before they're going to capitalize on this. The setup. It seems Robbins trying to flick it forward. Seminoles have scored 16 times off of set pieces this season, including that game winner in the semifinal. Brown. Robbins covered by Coolahan. You know, one thing I think, Julie, it's going to be interesting with this game. Obviously, it was supposed to have been played yesterday, but with BYU in it, and they do not play on Sundays. Game being moved to tonight gave both teams a chance to rest, recover. Huge. Go all out. Yeah, because as we've seen at past College Cups, that Friday-Sunday turn is a tough one with only one day in between. And then on top of that, you had the BYU-Santa Clara game that went to extra time, went to penalty kicks, and it was a brutal game in terms of physicality. Pace was fast. I bet their numbers were off the charts in that game. So the two 33s coming into the match for their respective teams. And good to see Rachel McCarthy out there, by the way. She comes on from McKaylee Moore and the attack was very productive. Had three shots all on goal, led the team in the semifinal. Weren't sure if she was going to be fully healthy for this one. And then Yuji Zhao, when you're a four-time first-team All-ACC player in the last two years, you've come off the bench. That tells you a little something about her value and how much it is yeah. recognized by anyone who plays against Florida State. And it tells you a little bit of something about the depth of Florida State as well. Usually a senior this year from Shanghai, China, second-team All-American. There is that press by BYU. We haven't seen it as much as we did in that first game against Santa Clara, but omnipresent if it's on. Vaca doing really well, not only to win it, but to keep it. Finds Coolahan. On the far side, at the near post. Roque is there. Christina Roque will send everyone up the field as she gets ready to distribute the ball for the Seminoles. ACC tournament champions for the second straight year. ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips here to watch the Seminoles in this championship match tonight as well. Zhao, the one making the run. And she forces the defense to make a play and give up a corner. Yuji Zhao gets ready from the corner. 
see that patch on her knee, had stitches in her head. It's been a rough go toward the end of the season here. She's a warrior out there for this Florida State team and serves a beautiful ball. One by BYU. Well, one of the stories this season for BYU is Carolyn Billings, our director of sports medicine. And it is so wonderful for all of them to have her here with them. She's been battling cancer really for many years, had a relapse in October, is a huge part of not only this team, but this program was there when Jennifer Rockwood started the program back in 1994. Seven years. Yes, and just such a, a source of strength and inspiration. We have Carolyn Can shirts, a sticker on the cleats that they all wear in her honor, and in V Week, love to be able to tell these stories and appreciate these people who are fighting. Incredible spirit, too, as Jen Rockwood was telling us, just such the heart and soul of this program as well. Howell looking right up the middle, had Olsen and Zhao there. Cassidy Smith coming out all the way to the edge of her area, the seventh year senior goalkeeper for the Cougars. Referee is checking on, I believe it's Jenna Nicewanger on the far side of the field. And BYU is ready to go. They put the ball in play, and Florida State said, Hang on, we've got a conversation happening over here. Here she had her hands on her knees, looking like She was injured earlier, tracking back on Olivia Smith. Oh, good long throw. Tucker the chance to turn. Bella Folino also into the match for BYU. That was her who got her foot to the ball. And this is one of those that squirts away. Folino just in off the bench. Number 18. Trying to wrap her foot all the way around that. That one's tough to turn on. Beata Olsen coming out now with still over 17 minutes to play. The freshman Maria Alagoa out of Portugal. Five goals, one assist on the season, including a golden goal game winner in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. Brown. So the look of that Front line in the attack for Florida State really changing with some of these substitutions. You've got Yuji Zhao up there now, Alagoa. You got an Alagoa, one of the most technical players in the college game, youth national team for the Portuguese side. But a different look than Olsen, who wants it in space. the drill so smooth and comfortable she on the ball solves pressure so well just that first line of pressure she pops into midfield and play makes from there so composed this oft raucous crowd settling down a little bit here as we move on scoreless in our first half in this national championship match pain for Alagoa can she get there Good defense by Grace Johnson, transfer from Ole Miss, senior. This her first full year with BYU, was also there in the spring. But another corner kick coming. This is the third of the first half for the Seminoles. Cassidy Smith, the season high, seven saves against Santa Clara in the semifinal. Will she have to Make a clearance on this ball. She will. Got both gloves to it. Trip. 
but not against Florida State. And as you said, Jen, she got both gloves too at Cassidy Smith. That's the challenge when you have about five Florida State players boxing you in is just getting off your line in general. How many times have we seen them score off that, as they did in the semifinal Florida State, off that second ball? Here comes Wade, up the middle, a chance. McCarthy had it taken away off of her foot by Madrill. Zhao, Alagoa, not quite ready to go forward. We'll go back through Howell and Nicewanger. Now Payne, Carl, excuse me. so many players in what about a 15 yard area of the field as Florida State was advancing. And this is why Florida State has been so hard to score on. Emily Madrill always in a covering position. Very much like an Alex Loera with Santa Clara in the way she just seems that she can read the game a pass ahead of everyone. As we said at the top of the show only one goal scored in the entire NCAA tournament. That was a penalty kick, so nothing in the run of play on Florida State. They are hard to break down. And then when they do this and they can dictate the tempo of the game by holding the ball, it's a lot of chasing for BYU. Of course, BYU would love to get out on the break. A lot of pressure right there on Flynn to make the correct play on that ball with Tucker lingering. Both players down after that. Hard collision. And both could require some attention. Jalen Howell and Michaela Coolahan, the two down. Uh. Coolahan grabbing her right ankle right away. Oh, there it is. And those two both just went hard into the ball. Coolahan clearly in some pain. The senior three-time All-American, three-time First team All-American, four-time All-American overall, Jalen Howell, the reigning Herman Trophy winner for Florida State, a semifinalist once again for college soccer's top player. I mean, this is a crucial moment in the match, depending on how these two very significant players come out of this challenge. Coolahan sitting on 18 goals and 15 assists to lead the entire team for BYU. And it's one of their leaders and one of their key cogs. You knew that was going to be a physical matchup between Howell and Coolahan. And here is another look at that 50 50. And it our referee does have a yellow card in his hand and he's standing near Jalen Howell. Looks like she is going to get booked and does. She's back on her feet. Not so for Coolahan. Yellow card assists to Florida State's number six, Jalen Howell. Eighteen goals, fifteen assists on the season. Top scorer in the country, Michaela Coolahan, the player down for BYU right now. And then on top of that, five goals in this NCAA tournament alone. And this is the dynamic pairing between Tucker up top and Coolahan for BYU that has been so much of their offensive prowess all year. Not their entire prowess, but there you see the crutches, whether she'll be able to even put any weight on it will tell us a lot. And we just told you the story of Carolyn Billings. That is her out there checking on Coolahan, one of the greatest players in BYU history. 
crowd applauds, but not what they want to see is Coulihan carried off of the field here with under 14 minutes to play in our first half. So Coulihan coming off, Ellie Mon, number 11, a sophomore from North Ogden, Utah, who's had an injury of her own to deal with, terrible leg injury, broke her leg in the spring and had to work her way back, now stepping in place of Coulihan, who started every match this season, and I don't believe ever came off the field in the semifinal no. for BYU, 110 minutes. So now the challenge, both teams. Back in action we go. Grace Johnson serves the free kick in. Jennifer Rockwood, head coach for BYU, in the middle of that group, talking to Coolahan. Meanwhile, Howell back onto the field for Florida State. Well, if you learned anything about this BYU team, don't count them out. Don't let anything force you to count them out because when they went down, missed the first two penalty kicks, you thought, surely this one's over. But no, this team somehow found its way back in, advanced, got here to this championship match. This team believes in themselves. But surely a challenge now with Coolahan on the bench. Corner kick, Corner kick coming up for the Seminoles. This is the fourth. To the corner for Florida State. So Jenna Nyswanger. Nice nice junior out of Huntington Beach, California. Back in her home state. And Howell, as we said, came back on. She is one of the top targets for the Seminoles in situations like this. Howell going for it. I think Smith was able to just get over the group and get a little bit on it. Well done by Smith again. And the adjustment that BYU has made with Coulihan out. And here is the Cassidy Smith. And again, Florida State wants to put so much traffic in there. Look at the body Smith has to get through to even get her gloves on that. But Wade, number 10, Olivia Wade going in the 10 position for BYU where Coolahan was. So she'll now be matched up against Howell and Mon, as you mentioned, Jen, coming in on that left side where Wade was. So still in that 4-4-2 diamond for, for BYU, which has really been a trademark, Jen Rockwood said, for the last four or five years. McCarthy and Tucker, the two up top right now for the Cougars. Olivia Smith trying to defend Gabby Carl. And they'll concede a corner on the other side. Fifth of this first half for Florida State. And again, similar to free kicks around the box. You want to minimize putting Florida State in this situation if you're BYU. Florida State has proven how dangerous they can be time and again on corner kicks this season. Yao's ball. Again, Smith got in there. There was some contact against Florida State, so that'll whistle the ball dead. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Men's College Cup semifinals coming your way Friday, December 10th at 6 and 8.30 p.m. on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Alagoa still right after the ball. She commits the foul, says our referee. So some breath held, I think, by these BYU fans when the whistle was blown, but immediately, J.C. Griggs pointing the other direction. Peterson to Tucker. Payne. 
Did well to keep it in, looking to go back in the middle for Alagoa. And you can almost look at it both ways, Julie. One with, and there's the ice on Coolahan's leg on the side. Not a good sign, but I was going to say with BYU's offense, one that's only been shut out four times this season, two of those by Santa Clara. Can't imagine they're going to stay scoreless again for long. And then with Florida State, the way they keep earning these corner kicks, that's also living dangerously if you're the BYU defense. So what I'm telling you is, <laughs> I do feel like there are some goals in this game. I sense some goals <laughs> in this game. <laughs> it's been tight, though, as, as you would expect. Yeah, and I, and I just think when you have the pace of a Cameron Tucker in your number 20, and as we've seen already, especially in the first part of this first half, is more touches in the box, running at that back line. If they can free her up, there she is, to get faced up and running at Florida State's back line, good things will happen. But surely an adjustment that BYU is going to have to make when you lose a player of that caliber with the production. 18 goals, 15 assists for Michaela Coulihan. Yeah, no more productive player in the country this season. And I think what Florida State has done well is there's an electricity to the way BYU plays with the frenzy and the pressing and the energy. Every team that plays BYU talks about it and it's on, across all three lines. And what Florida State does such a good job of because they're so good on the ball is they take away that energy from them by holding it, making them chase. And they don't allow them to press as much because they're good technically. Well, and it may not be an exact direct comparison, but you think about Florida State coming out of the ACC and a team that historically has been known for playing that style of soccer, North Carolina, one that Florida State has learned from having played against that passing so relentless much, style. Right. And, and they were so good at being able to break UNC's press. Brown maybe a stride or two from getting her foot to that ball. This will stay with BYU. Lisco clearly thought there had been a touch, as did Mark Krikorian's why she let it go out of bounds, but referee pointing for the Cougars to take the throw. Peterson has a good left foot. Looking toward the back post, but up over the head of Foligno. Battle on the corner, number two of this first half for the Cougars. And before this corner kick can happen, Addie Gardner, number 19, coming on for Tucker. So Tucker will get a little bit of a break. And good to see Gardner back out there, too. She yeah, came off injured in the semifinal. Mark question mark with her ankle, so that is great to see her back. Emma Bissell, Christina Lynch, both on for Florida State. Brown and Nicewanger coming off. Foligno now ready to go from the corner after those substitutions get set. Or not. Cougars with a plan that does not play out the way they drew it up. A little miscommunication there. And you only get so many opportunities at those looks against Florida State with how good they are defensively. You're going to be upset that they wasted that one. Now you mentioned just that one goal that Florida State has conceded in the NCAA tournament as a penalty kick, and that came in a match that was pretty well decided at that point in their second round against SMU. They wound up winning it 5-1, to one, and that penalty kick goal came late.
This Florida State team throughout the season was the nation's last remaining unbeaten, untied team. They won their first 14 matches of the season before really going through a tough stretch at the end of their regular season on the road at North Carolina at Duke and then home against Virginia. All of those top 10 ranked opponents, Virginia at the time number one, and the Cavaliers wound up winning the ACC regular season title with the draw down in Tallahassee. And since then, the Seminoles just continued to do what they have done over the last few years. This is their 12th College Cup overall, eighth in the last 11 years, third appearance in the last four years in the final. Well done by Vaca. Yeah. <laughs> Pretending she was going to play and lets it run. And I, and I think if you're Florida State, the way they've matched up this game has been smart. To switch to the three back with wing backs, given the diamond for BYU, forces them to have to figure out how to switch over and solve those wing backs. And if they had stayed in their 4-3-3, which we have seen so much this season, then they obviously would have been numbers down in the middle. Cougars trying to create before this first half ends on the ground in front of the goal, still there in the box. The shot from Wade is too tall. And good things happen for BYU when they try and get in line and get those balls across in the box. Just get underneath that one. But their success has come when they can get and turn that defense and be playing into what they call the assist zone and finding those half spaces in the box. Just a couple of minutes away from halftime. Coming up, we'll talk about what this means. Michaela Coolahan, is she done for this match? Out in this first half with injury. Plus our V Week call to action, and we'll look back at some of our images and moments from this 2021 Women's College Cup. And we will be talking with BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood, so hopefully we can get some sort of an update from her on how Coolahan is doing. Never a good sign, though, when the ice bag comes out. Pavlisko. Pretty brave on the ball, but lost it, committed the foul, gives up the free kick to the Cougars. Set pieces, BYU not as dangerous as Florida State has been throughout the course of the season, but they can create some chaos off of them to get this number one offense in the nation going a little bit. Just two shots apiece for each team with a minute to go in our first half. Peterson, good looking ball, but a little too high up and over everybody. Great looking ball, not just a good looking ball, great looking ball by Peterson. Mistimed that aerial challenge on the back post. Well, so often these national championship matchups, they are tight. The teams have played their way here with quality on both sides of the ball. Tough to gain an advantage. And neither team will have one after our first 45 minutes. Scoreless from Santa Clara between Florida State, the number one overall seed in this tournament, and BYU. What is the status of Michaela Coolahan? Certainly a question at the forefront of the minds of most BYU fans. Yeah, and it's a good sign that she's putting weight on that right leg 
as we saw her coming off the field, wasn't putting any weight on it. Trying to pump up that team. And so much of it against a Florida State side that loves to control the ball is just making sure you keep your spirits up because that can get frustrating. And especially a team as dominant as BYU has been, to chase like that can get mentally frustrating beyond physically. We are now joined by BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood. Coach, first of all, how is Michaela right now? Do you have any updates for us? Um, she'll be okay. She got hit pretty hard. She's got a nice bruise already, but she's gonna give it a go in the second half. We'll get her back out there and see how it feels. Your thoughts on first half, coach, and what do you want to see in the second half? Um, we are obviously playing a little tight. Our back line was struggling to connect some passes, and we rely a lot of them uh, for our possession and for our attack. So we got to clean uh, a lot of things up on the back line and just uh, connect and play like we've been doing all year, and I think good things will happen. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. And BYU fans, I know you appreciate hearing what you just heard. Michaela Coulahan planning to come back out in the second half for BYU, the Cougars, and the Seminoles 0-0 after the first 45 halftime highlights. And Julie Sots coming up. Always. So Curious consistent. to see the wrinkles yeah, that he will break out. Mark Krikorian had a few of them tonight, which we will ask him about here in just a moment. Mark Krikorian joining us now. Okay, Mark, tell us about this formation you rolled out here tonight and what you thought of it in the first half. Well, I think overall we were effective. We uh, limited their opportunities uh, at our goal, and I thought that at times we were able to establish some decent possession, but we missed too many passes, and uh, we're a little bit rushed. I mean, their quality is, is really quite good, and we're going to have to be sharper if we want to win this game. What, what did you talk about in terms of adjustments for second half, Coach? Yeah, it was, uh, it was more on the attacking side, to be honest with you. Good spacing, um, keeping the ball, good controlling touch, and then just linking passes. I think we've taken the ball. We're making it too transitional. We, we need to make sure when we're playing in the attack that we're dictating the tempo of the game. All right, Mark, thank you thank so you. much. That is where BYU can get you in that transition game. So much pace. And they love to live in that transition game. What good news as well. Wow. There she is, number eight, Michaela Coolham, back on the field. With I mean, a big smile on her face. A lot of smiles and the BYU fans in front of us here too. I, I have to be honest, I did not think she was coming back after that hit that she and Jalen Howell had going for the ball. She had the ice on her leg. How about that, though? Back out there, the All-American leading scorer in the country. Not done yet. You can see across the way, good number of Florida State fans have made their way across the country here to California. But BYU, boy, this team can travel. Historic season as the Cougars in their first ever College Cup looking for their first ever national championship and the Seminoles trying to continue truly what has been a dynasty in the making under Mark Krikorian. Florida State in white, BYU in blue. Cameron Tucker, the other part of that dynamic scoring duo for this high powered Cougar offense. Brecken Mazingo, number five there for BYU. Ran into a couple of Florida State defenders. Shepard picks it up. Looks to Tucker. Had a goal call back in the eighth minute of this match. Who was just a hair offside on that goal. Clara Robbins. So who throws the first punch in the second half? You want you a team that typically likes to fly at you out of the break and off the start of the match. Tucker slid and kicked out of the way by Madrill. Olivia Smith, the freshman, played so well for the Cougars this season. Over to Shepard. 
player that holds them all together in the middle. Shepard still has it, takes a shot, and Roquet up to the task. And that's something Shepard can do all day. I honestly think I'd love to see her do it a little bit more because she has the ability to solve pressure from that base of the diamond, run at players, and when no one steps to her, she thinks, why not? Roquet covers that post. Might have been better to try for the far post on that one, but that is the ability of Jamie Shepard in that holding six. Mark Krikorian even recognizing just how good Shepard is in that diamond saying, you know, the player that doesn't get enough attention. He said it to us yesterday on the phone is Shepard. Shepard, a Utah Gatorade Player of the Year in high school. A couple of those on this BYU team, very Utah heavy roster. Quite the contrast to Florida State, which is very international in their makeup. And two coaches who've been at this a while. So building their systems, building their styles. Jennifer Rockwood at BYU getting the Cougars to this College Cup for the first time in this her 27th season after she started the program back in 1994. A couple of her players from that team, by the way, here in attendance. Florida State, something brewing with Robbins. Olsen waiting at the goal, but so too was Cassidy Smith. Better sequence by Florida State in that attacking third, which Mark Corian was talking about at halftime. And Olsen has had a quiet first half, came out fairly early. Their leading goal store, scorer with 14 goals. Want to get her going in this game for sure. Flynn kicks off the ball from Mazingo. And with all of these different types of attacking players that Florida State can bring in off the bench, yeah, if you're not producing, you might find yourself on the bench. In the second half, you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer, so you could see a little bit more on and off depending on what the coaches are looking for. Ball over the top for Payne, the Irish International, made just her second start of the season this evening. And limited time with the Florida State team this season away on international duty. And this is one Jalen Howe loves to drop in. And where Florida State is good at reading where the space is, is if BYU is pressing up, they're gonna drop it in behind. If they're dropping off, they'll drop it at their feet. Howell picks it up in midfield, over to Carl. Makes her 100th appearance for Florida State tonight. Gabby Carl started every match of her career. Nice Wonger. BYU knew where that ball was going. Coolahan. Grace Johnson wants to try things on the other side. Loses it. Season six of the Laughter Permitted podcast. Heard of with it. Julie Foudy, available now wherever you get your podcasts. I've heard of it too. Also enjoy that. You always do a great job, Julie, with your interviews. From Florida State. Again on the attack. Robbins has the shot. So be sure to check out Laughter Permitted and Florida State reminding us they can create pretty quickly. Trying to keep an eye on Coolahan there in the middle of the field, right near the logo for BYU, just how well she's moving. So impressed that she has got to be playing through some pain to be out there. How limited is she, though? She does so much work and draws so much attention. And this, this is what can really frustrate an this opponent, is, right? I was just going to say, this is, this is the death by a thousand passes that so <laughs> many teams live. Is, is Florida State on all three lines? And you just don't see that very often in the collegiate game where all three lines are so gifted technically to solve pressure. And that's where 
the press of BYU becomes really difficult to trigger. There is Olsen, her first touch, a little far away from the foot. And then in transition, losing the ball too quickly, so then you end up chasing against a very good possession style Florida State team. Brown. Stopped. Tucker wants to turn. Florida State does not want one-on-one -on -one defending when Tucker has the ball facing the goal. They give Flynn some credit for slowing her down. Losing Oz oh, after that. You could see exactly what Tucker sees in that. And, and, and part of me thinks, if you have the pace of Cameron Tucker and you can face up in that position, you have to get in the box, your, box yourself. Just go. I would say to her if I was her coach, don't ever pass. <laughs> Just run and then run some more at players and then run some more. If I see you pass, you're coming out. She has it now, Tucker. Let's see what she does. Keeps it, now passes and loses it. Good things happen when you get in the box on the dribble, and especially if you're Cameron Tucker with her pace. Getting into that attack zone, as BYU calls it. But they've been so successful throughout the season. Peterson, her ball blocked out of bounds. BYU throw. Looks like we have a substitution. substitution. Ellie Mon, who we saw come on in the first half, will replace McKaylee Moore, the senior up top for BYU. So BYU try to get to that end line a little more often, force some more balls in the box like that, or at least try to get some corner kicks, something that they typically are very good at doing. That's so much of their service that they've had success on in the season has come from getting in line, pulling it back, finding a seam. They give Florida State credit because not letting them get in behind very often. Coolahan touches the ball. Everybody's attention in the stands picks up a bit as it does when Tucker has it. Tucker trying to get around two defenders. Ball bouncing in the box. No one close enough to her in blue. Step in from Flynn. Olsen could have turned. Had Jody Brown calling for it, slashing forward. Olsen never even looked over her shoulder. This is where Florida State is so interesting because Madrill will step into that midfield and play make for them. So Howell will switch into that center back position. Madrill, very interchangeable, steps into midfield. She's that comfortable. I would say Madrill over Howell being the person who sets the tempo of this team. But to have two players with that gift, where Jalen Howell can rock a 50 yard ball on a dime. So how do you break it? How do you get out of this if you're BYU? Yeah, I think you have to get more pressure on Madrill because she sets everything for them. And she's so good at breaking that first line of pressure. You have to get not just one player on her, but two and some numbers. Crowd liking what is happening for BYU. Mon. That ball just has not been there or has been right to a Florida State player when BYU has tried to get it into the box. Coolahan. And I think to your point, Jen, that service is coming too early. They have to make the decision either to get in line or cut into the box and draw a defender or two, and then scenes are going to open up. But right now, the first instinct is I'm going to serve that ball a little bit early, and then a Madrill or a Flynn or a Pavlisco is there to clean up. And Florida State's so organized in their box, you've got to shift them a little bit more to pull them out of their shape.
Well, Vinny Vaca got it all the way into the corner and a little scuffle with Pavlisko. Now, JC Griggs coming over to calm things down a bit. Vaca doing a little step over shimmy like a forward. <laughs> a, little, a little chippy. He's gonna have a little. A lot of emotion, a lot on the line for these two teams. No foul, a shot is taken. Shepard's got the range, no doubt about that, but doesn't put it on target. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Buick, the official SUV of the NCAA. Pavlisko looking toward the front line and Olsen. Robbins. It is remarkable too. Michaela's moving Coulihan really well and she's not backing up from tackles. Because when you come in, that I mean that leg's gonna be black and blue by tomorrow, if not tonight. It, it affects how you go into plays and tackles, and she's still putting her defensive duties in. Three-time offensive player of the year in the West Coast Conference, four-time All-American, a giveaway though. Robbins thought she could sniff something out there with a quick shot. Well, we've seen Claire Robbins rock uh -huh. that from uh -huh. outside before. <laughs> ACC championship game comes to mind. Yep. But I think it is asking a lot with a seventh year senior like Cassidy Smith. And yes, she is a seventh year senior. We haven't even told that story yet, Jen. No, another one of those incredible stories that have come with this trip to the championship for BYU. Full medical red shirts in there. And Cassie Smith, by the way, the goalkeeper playing with an injured shoulder that requires its third surgery once next. the season is over. Next yeah, week? Next, you know next week. She said? Yeah, okay. Next week. It popped out in the quarterfinal. Brown left it just a bit short, but she tries to hop back onto it. Grace Johnson, well done. Peterson now with it for BYU. That's a better looking ball. And she has shown the service. She's got left foot, can be dangerous. Shot from distance from Johnson. Has to be parried down, but nobody nearby. She's like, okay, the Red Seas are gonna part. I am gonna step into this. Oh, and that one was dipping and swerving a little bit. She got a hold of that. that that's not easy by Roquet. Grace Johnson, this the player who was at Ole Miss. Her sister Ella played there. And then when Ella was done, Grace decided to come back to her home state from Centerville, Utah. Robbins had it taken away. Johnson all over the place for BYU. Tucker. Other than the goal that was called back, we have not seen BYU able to get that ball behind, that space behind the back line for Tucker to run onto. Howell seems to step up in big moments when Florida State needs it. Olsen, boy, she and Vaca really went full speed toward the ball together. That's another matchup that is, and, and how that's not a foul on Olsen there coming in. It's the second one here. Well, you know, Mark Corian said that he felt watching BYU in their semifinal against Santa Clara was a very physical match. He told his team they were going to need to match the intensity, and it looks like they have certainly taken heed to those words. Give it there. 
Nice longer for Carl. Good run by Carl. And Cassidy Smith making the grab. Really good run by Carl, and it's the pace of that nice longer ball that gives her so many different options. She doesn't have to control it. She can get her head up looking and just doesn't choose the right option in the end. Offside flag goes up on the other end. That's got to be Cameron Tucker in her nightmares. Just the thing that holds her back probably more than anything else, that darn flag going up on the side. <laughs> that darn thing called offside. <laughs> How dare you? Because if she gets it right, not many who can catch her. Nice Wonger nearly at her heels on the sideline, giving some whip for Florida State to work with. I don't want to go back to the Olympics of this summer, but the offside uh, discussion of <laughs> oh. <laughs> when you bring that up, it's like, okay, it, and it was the discussion Blacko had to have with the team. You've got the pace to beat them. You don't need <laughs> to push it. <laughs> that's that's the same discussion you have, right, with a player like Cameron Tucker. Uh, you got the pace, sister. You're good. Unfortunately, all those offside calls, double digits, as I recall, what did they mean? Storylines, unfortunately, for Vlatko and Danasi in the U.S. national team during the Olympics. I believe it was 10. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was double digits. Maybe not. Either way, too many for the U.S. is liking. Finished with bronze. Peterson. Knocked off the ball by Payne. And we have a stop it for some substitutions. Yu Zhao coming back on for Florida State. And Olivia Wade, who started the match, coming in for Bella Felino. Both of those two play a lot of minutes in the midfield for BYU. And this feels like a game that Yu Zhi Zhao could come in and immediately be a game changer in. Five goals, nine assists on the season for Yu Zhi. Second team All-American this year for the Seminoles. And the first player in Seminole history to be named four-time first team All-ACC. Good flick from Tucker, but Nobody on the other end. Goal Yuji Zhao was ACC Freshman of the Year back in 2018. And that started that string of all ACC first team selections. It's so fun because we had to sit, of course, with all the teams before they play their semifinal. And Yuji Zhao, one of the players that came in with the Florida State team and just a smile on her face literally the whole time. I mean, she was adorable. And the team was saying, yes, everyone loves Yuji. She knows everyone. She's friends with everyone. Different when she gets on the field, I said. Yeah. She knows how to turn it on. But yes, you can certainly sense that personality shining through. It's always so nice to have some face-to-face -face time with the players, especially over this past 19 months or so. We all miss that, I think. Brown in tight quarters, back from Olsen, just a little bit behind her. Coulihan, the crowd urging her to go. Coulihan can cover ground and loves to work with Tucker, but Flynn had it covered. Olivia Smith, a nice swanger, colliding that time. Another crunchy tackle, yeah. glad they're up. It is the feeling you get right now, just a little fog descending in the air, the crowd quieting just a little bit. It just feels like it's that point where it's hanging in the balance and it's waiting for somebody to kind of step up and grab it. And will it be one of these super seniors that both teams have? Or a younger player maybe trying to help cement some history for their program. Oh, 
Mozingo, quick touch to find Tucker. Coolahan coming after it. Coolahan has had a few more touches than she did in the semifinal, but has not been able to do anything too dangerous yet. Here comes Zhao. Nice one on the outside. Olsen central. Zhao has it now. Three, four players around her. Florida State had a chance to hoist the trophy just this past spring in that split 2020-21 season. Cary, North Carolina wound up giving up a late goal, a late equalizer to Santa Clara, then went down in penalty kicks, trying to look for a different outcome this time. Brown in the box, her left-footed shot! As close as they come. And you just get a sense that is what this game needs, is an individual flair and creativity to turn it on its head. Almost getting that in Jody Brown. What a sequence. Beats one player, two players. Thinks she can sneak it in that near side, in the near post. Jody Brown, three goals in the NCAA tournament, all of them game winners including one really early in the fifth minute, round three, which is a one nothing win against another West Coast Conference team in Pepperdine. Had a great year. Smith. Christina Lynch, who just came into the match, defending, keeping her on that sideline. Coolahan trying to provide some support. That is team defending, is it not? A little help for Lynch. Coolahan. Coolahan down behind the play, advantage played on as BYU still has it at the edge of the box. Tucker couldn't get set up. Ball did go out of bounds. Flynn and Madrill, the two backs on this left side here. Here's that little contact earlier. It's hard to see really from that angle anyway. I mean, Coolahan certainly went down, but it didn't look like there was a ton from Zhao. Managing emotions, using it as fuel and not as frustration, right? That's always a challenge, especially the bigger the stage gets. Under 20 minutes to play, still zeros on the scoreboard in our national championship matchup between BYU, a four seed in this tournament, out of the West Coast Conference, co-champions, and the four state Seminoles, the number one overall seed, ACC tournament champions. That's where you can see Wade saying, I want to be, I want it in front of me, not behind me. But that's where BYU just has to be sharper in that transition. Because there are those moments you had five, six on that front line for Florida State right there flying. And they're sending numbers. And if you can catch them in that transition, which BYU is so fast at, they're going to be susceptible to that. BYU looking to create through Peterson. It stays in. Now out. Let's go you can watch La Liga on ESPN plus Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid Sunday 2.50 Eastern time on ESPN plus. Roque and Madrid talking things over. Pavlisko 
Managed to get rid of it just in time. Shepard just had nowhere to go. For Howell's honor, Brown into the box. It's a little off balance. Grace Johnson on the other side. These center backs on both teams covering a lot of ground. That one on Olsen. Florida State looking for a way out of the corner. Tucker with some pressure, but she's all alone and easily beaten by Flynn. Now she goes past Coolahan. the way that it is being played right now, Julie, favor Florida State? I mean, I know there's no advantage to be had in the score, but this style, just the feel of it? Yeah, because I think they're dictating the tempo as they want to do. So whether they have the courage in these last 16 minutes to take some risks and seek out that reward. But right now, in full control, and BYU just trying to pick its moments. And Florida State, a team that has scored 62% of its goals in the second half this season. So they are comfortable when it's tight, it's close, they haven't scored yet. They feel like they can get it late. And that's Heather Payne, the junior out of Ireland. And again, I think we're Florida State. Now this is Emily. Was that Madrill? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. That is Emily. I had to look again. <laughs> that That's your center back, by the way. Okay. <laughs> what a game she she is having. And if she doesn't get picked up by an NWSL team because she's so versatile, I would be shocked. So versatile from that back. She can play make in midfield. There she is getting forward. And fun fact. Sofia Huerta was her babysitter. <laughs> I, 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 I love know that the connections. Because Sofia Huerta is my source sitting next to me right now. <laughs> Former right? Santa Clara Bronco, yes, and US who national wants to do team. Television. I was like, get up here. Let's go. Get in the booth. You just told her she had to give you a good fact that you could use in the game yeah. to sit here. <laughs> yeah. How about that? In Idaho together. She babysat Emily Madrid. <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. She told us that at halftime. I was like, what? It's a small world, the soccer community. And we are in our final 15 minutes of regulation anyway. Still tied. Steven Stadium, Santa Clara, California. Mark Kikorian's Florida State Seminoles taking on Jennifer Rockward, BYU Cougars. One of these teams will be national champions. Howell. Tucker was calling for it in the middle, has two defenders around her. She's trying to find some space, gets the ball from Coolahan. I'll tell you, the work that Flynn has done on Tucker tonight has yep. been impressive. Also going into that under 20 December camp with the U.S. national team, Lauren Flanagan. This kid deserves it. What a game she has had next to Madrill. So good, the two of them. And exciting to see the U-20s getting back together. It's been a while because of the pandemic. Opportunity now, and the shot too high. BYU has done that several times tonight. This is Mon. Goal kick, 
take a little deflection made. Peterson getting forward as she does so well. Has an engine that just won't stop. And there's Mon. Let's see if it does take a little deflection. I think it does. They don't they agree with it, me. Yeah. Maybe a bit off the drills back. McCarthy in for Tucker. Different look now in that attack for BYU. You can bet Tucker will be back, but McCarthy also a good threat off the bench for the Cougars. Four goals, five assists on the season. Zhao. Flynn. And again, Johnson has just been smart. Both defenses have been really good at just breaking up the pass. changes you think need to be made at this point is it, or, or does each team kind of stick with what they've got I think for BYU you'd have to get some numbers committed forward in terms of pressing to actually be successful against Florida State and, and what we've seen in this game is Florida State has neutralized their biggest weapon and BYU loves to press and disrupt and they haven't been able to because they're so good so you don't want to get deep into a low block, but you do want to stay compact and come out of that if you're BYU because the press hasn't worked against such a technical Florida State side. And just hope you can catch them in transition. But I think if you're Florida State, I, I wouldn't want to see this game go to, to extra time and penalty kicks. Certainly not penalty kicks. I mean, at, at some point, with the amount of possession you have, Nobody really wants it to go that far. Although you'd think Florida State in particular would feel confident there as Howell is down. It was Howell and Coolahan, remember. Now they each have a yellow card. Coolahan got one after that play. Howell had one in the first half after a tough tackle on Coolahan. I think that's a good call. Not much to argue, really. A little frustrated because it was bounced off there. <laughs> Didn't do anything. Cougars outscored their NCAA tournament opposition 15 to 2 coming into this College Cup. And all we've said, Florida State is comfortable in tight games. They've had three in a row that have been one nothing victories, one of those in overtime. BYU's been accustomed to a bit of a bigger cushion and relying on getting something out of that tremendous offense. A single corner kick for either team in our second half. Is there perhaps a more probably, conservative play? Yeah, I think it's more conservative. There's probably some fatigue in there as well. And this is a huge field that Florida State is opening wide up. That's Heather Payne, Payne who is down. Well, Payne had been out for quite some time in the regular season, had been early October. That was her last appearance before she was a sub in the ACC championship game against Virginia. Still been in and out a couple times since, but getting the start tonight. I want to remind you that coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Men's College Cup semifinals Friday, December 10th at 6 and 8.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU from Cary, North Carolina. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. There's your matchups. Clemson, Notre Dame, some familiar foes 
getting things started. And Brown will take this opportunity to come back into the match for Florida State. She was not on the bench for long. Comes on in place of Payne, who was shaken up after that last play. Olivia Smith had an opening, still a chance, and it is high. Just like that, out of the stoppage, BYU pounces on the Seminoles. Shepard coming from midfield. This is freshman Olivia Smith from that right back position. And I don't think that was intentional by McCarty, but it does catch a lucky bounce for Shepard trying to get it off of that half bounce. Just waits a little too long, so it's high, it's high. Catches it a bit too high, but what an effort and run in by Shepard. I get the feeling with Shepard, the one I get with Howell too. Get them close to the goal, good things happen. It's not necessarily their primary role, but when they are up there, they're dangerous. Here's Shepard again on the ball. Wade. Maybe I don't give McCarthy enough, enough credit. Maybe it was a like little spinner behind the back. <laughs> yeah, watching the replay, Chopped I think. <laughs> You're probably right. Bit of luck involved there, but you take it. You own it, man it. Christina Lynch, senior out of Granger, Indiana. 16 starts on the season for the Seminoles. Did come off the bench tonight. Has appeared in every NCAA tournament match off the bench, in fact. A drill get that line, get that line. setting the play for Florida State wants it back in the box Madrill the defensive player of the year in the ACC creating some offense in our first corner kick of the second half Madrill's recognition of a game the way she shapes her body all she's doing it's such a good lesson for young kids in terms of how to solve pressure she shapes up like she's passing to the right the defense bites she comes left, she's getting forward, she, just her spacing and IQ, soccer IQ is so good. Tucker came back on for BYU. Here is the corner from Florida State. One again in the air by the Cougars. There's a follow-up shot, but it won't count anyway. Bounced off of a few defenders. Having a word with Coolahan, it looked like there. McCarthy in the middle. Tackle. Foul. Is there more to be had? Apparently not. Oh, and this is interesting because that to me is a yellow card. How sitting, as yeah. we know, on a yellow card. And that is a situation, the referee knowing. But that to me should absolutely be a second. Checks her with her body. She was around her. And that is a foul that Howell cannot be making in this moment in this game. Johnson on the ensuing free kick. Lucky to get away with that. Yes. And maybe that's the reminder she needed, but you know as a player you're sitting on a yellow. You cannot be doing a foul like that. Super lucky to walk away from that one. Jalen Howell, a senior who has appeared with the senior U.S. women's national team. And a very important part 
He's a two-time ACC Midfielder of the Year and what this Seminole team is trying to do. Bounds it goes over to Florida State. Zhao. Really well pressured and won by Shepard. She is ready. Says, give me the ball back. Coolahan does get it to her. McCarthy. Can the Cougars get it right? Not this time. Again, just nothing. <laughs> given away on that left side by Flynn. Defensively. BYU, whether it was Tucker or McCarthy on that right side, Lauren Flynn and Madrill, the combination has been a very challenging one for BYU to get in line and get around. What do the final four and a half minutes have in store of this NCAA championship match in the College Cup? Florida State looking to win their third national championship, adding to the 2014 and 2018 titles. BYU, the debutantes in the College Cup this year, trying to make the most of their visit. Pavlisko wins it, no foul called. Coolahan. An incredible story even that Coolahan back out here for the second half after she came off after a tough collision that earned Jalen Howell her yellow card in the first. Olsen, leading scorer for the Seminoles and Brown who has the best speed in that front line for Florida State. Well covered by Olivia Smith on that weak side. That was a 3v3 with the speed of Brown and Olsen coming at you. Carl. Defended by Foligno. Flynn. Howell sizing things up. The drill, so smooth. Howell drawing some booze as she touches the ball for Perhaps what crowd feels was a missed second yellow card that was not given. Two minutes to go. Payne back out for Florida State. She'd come off a little gimpy earlier in this half. And Brown just bumped off the ball. BYU doesn't keep it for long, though. Carl. Already has a gold medal this year with Canada. Would like to earn a little more hardware for her efforts. And Florida pushing the drill into midfield now consistently playing even in the back. So they have just Pavlisko and Flynn marking man-to-man. -man. And Madrill 
roaming from midfield in these final few minutes. Yu Zhao. Known for her technical brilliance. Into the box. Up, off the crossbar. The follow-up is blocked. The closest the Seminoles have come. And a couple players down. Jody Brown struggling to get up and put some weight on that right leg for Florida State. And believe that might be Grace Johnson, but we'll get a better look here who's down for BYU. And this where Cassidy Smith trying to get a hand on of it. Jumps a little early there. Couldn't parry it over the bar. Here's another look at it. Can't get it over. And it's Grace Johnson and yeah. Jody Brown who collide here. Just a ball to the face, I think, from Brown. It does make you wonder if this thing could come down to a corner kick, a set piece being the difference. You think how close Rutgers came in the closing minutes of that semifinal against Florida State, took some big saves and parries away by Roque to keep the Scarlet Knights out of the goal. Yeah, and for Florida State, a corner kick bouncing around like that and Jalen Howell on the end of it to finish it off with six red Rutgers jerseys around her. Somehow the ball bounces straight to her and she finishes it off on that corner kick. Cassidy Smith, the veteran back there in goal, 25 years old, started her career at BYU in 2015 when she redshirted, had two medical redshirts after that. And then just the last couple years has finally been able to take over the starting spot. Final seconds of regulation means it is time to remind you, refresh your memories on what overtime looks like in college soccer. We would have potentially two 10 minute periods. They are sudden victory though. So the first goal wins it, ends it, earns the team a trophy. If we're still tied after those two periods. We would go to penalty kicks. And just like BYU went through in their semifinal, the Cougars once again need some more time, as do the Seminoles. No score at the end of 90. But stay on the edge of your seat because this one can end in a moment. It is not like the international game or the pro game. It is different in that it is sudden victory. If after those two overtime periods we are still tied, then off we go to penalty kicks, which we have also seen the last two years in the national championship game. So get ready, Florida State unbeaten in overtime this season. One loss for BYU, so they both have played into overtime at some point. For Florida State, they did have one overtime match in the NCAA tournament in the quarterfinal against Michigan. Beata Olsen with the game winner in that matchup. Nobody going home yet. Not for this one. Not with the national championship on the line. BYU has had such great support of their program at home, as has Florida State, I should point out. But both teams really traveling. It is largely the BYU contingent here in front of our booth. So we see a lot of the blue and white supporting the Cougars in their first ever College Cup. Their second straight match to head to overtime. As they edged out Santa Clara, it was 0-0 in that one after 110 minutes. Eventually penalty kicks decided it. Carl. 
Brown. Three goals in the NCAA tournament for Jody Brown. There's a perfect example, Jody Brown with her pace. When she gets the ball, why are you going back? <laughs> this is where you have to face up, take on, get in the box, get in line. Jody Brown has the pace and the technical ability to face up and take on, take on. Julie, you know, when you were playing, do you, do you remember when you're heading into an extra time period, especially in a big game like this? I mean, what generally is the message? Is it stick to what we've been doing? Is it just kind of dig deep? I mean, I know it can be different for every team in every situation, but I'm always curious if the teams, you know, where they're going to decide to push, where they decide to be conservative and not make yeah. a mistake. Well, I think you, you obviously say, you know, we're going to pick our moments, but you want to play on the front foot as well. You don't want to go into a de defensive shell and be conservative um, and doing it smartly. But most of it by now, with all the games they play, think about the seasons these kids have had with COVID. And then, the, the you know, the late season last year, they really didn't have much of a break. I mean, they're tired. And so most of that conversation, I imagine, is... Come on, dig deep. It, it, and if you can get there mentally, because physically you're exhausted, and just believing you can get there mentally is half of it. No, McCarthy slipped. Otherwise, she might have been an initial target, but this could work out in BYU's favor anyway. This will be their first corner kick since the first half, just their third of the match. The nation's number one offense has been held in check for now 200 minutes. Is that pushing it for a team that scored more goals than anybody else in D1 this season? Coolahan right at Roquet. Coolahan getting a, a bit of separation off pain, pushing away, finding a gap. Unfortunately, right at Roquet. Emily Madrill has played in just about every patch of grass on the field tonight for Florida State. Mostly central, not as much on the sides, but all the way from her own 18-yard box to the other. She covers here. Everybody pointing the other way. Madrill has other ideas. Goes back to Flynn. BYU fans yelling, pressure. <laughs> They've been out there playing for 90 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I know. And I, and I think the players are probably like, you come down here and pressure him. Good Pain. luck. At the near post. It is saved and kept in, or is it? I think it did go over the line, so it should be a corner for Florida State on that play. There. There's another look at it. Looks like it's over the line there. Hard to see, but it looks like it is. From this corner, it's nice, Warner. Smith came out to punch, didn't get much of it. Madrill. Has to play it back out. Reset for Nice Wonger. Tucker would love to just get that and go. But her shadow on the evening, Flynn, right there beside her. some space and a pass to Nicewanger. Forward it goes for Brown. Stopped. Mozingo. Everybody ready to run. Tucker. 
can't quite catch up to the ball on that attempt. Florida State. And Florida right now, again, you're seeing the two back, Florida State, the two back in Pavlisko and Flynn playing man on man when they're attacking. And just leaving those two, everyone for Florida State is going. Zhao looked and saw space behind her. What will she do with it? Yuji Zhao, was there a foul? No. Zhao again, playing setup, this time for Payne. BYU's got a lot of ground to cover. And that's really, looks like that's been the problem, Julie. They win it, they're so deep, and there's nobody in the middle, and there's maybe one player up on that front line. And, and then on top of that, not able to connect more than three passes to give players the time to get forward. But you have to give credit to Florida State and the way they're shaping up against them, because one, they're holding the ball well, offensively and defensively. They're putting enough pressure on them to make it uncomfortable and BYU unable to hold the ball. Bouncing ball, but not enough of a bounce to make life difficult for Christina Roque. We did see, I will say, in the semifinal as, this, as the night wore on, on Friday night, how it got so slippery and so wet. So that ball that just skipped on Roque there could be a dangerous one. There's a lot of moisture in the air, a little bit of precipitation throughout the day, but just kind of this fog that is hovering above Stevens Stadium here in Santa Clara, adding to that slipperiness on the field. Carl splits the two, but what a recovery by Smith, the freshman. Carl still going after it. Play on. Wow. I fully expected the referee to be pointing to the penalty spot on that one. I cannot wait to see it. Here it is. How Carl ends up with this ball. Two defenders splits them. Yeah. Let's it? see it from this angle. Right there. I think she goes down a little too easy there from that angle. Maybe that's a good no call. At first, with the naked eye, I thought that absolutely is a penalty kick. I have seen many times that called as a penalty kick, but I do like that he didn't give it to him there. I think for the most part, that has been the case, that the whistle has not been blown. Both teams might feel as much as they think it should have been. Coolahan with it now. Under a minute to play in overtime period number one. Peterson. And for BYU, it's got to be a bit of just trying to get your shots on target. They have outshot the Seminoles tonight, 10-6. A little bit of trouble as you talked about it getting slippery. And a deep breath of relief here from Roquet. Seven, yeah, because especially it ended seven, up at Tucker's four, feet. Four, three, two, one, zero. A little slip and slide, but no harm done. We need more time in Santa Clara. And I think if you're BYU, you also, to your point, Jen, have to say, yeah, we got to get some numbers forward too, right? We got to pick our moments. Because as it gets wetter and slippier and Roquet, as you saw, already on the ground from just a goal kick, th that second ball, that bounce, you don't know what's going to happen. you got to get those numbers in there to take some chances. How brave will you be with the national championship on the line? It could come down to that. in 2020, technically the spring of 2021, but called the 2020 NCAA Championship. It was Santa Clara 
winning on penalty kicks against Florida State. The year before that, Stanford did it to North Carolina. Deanna Olsen, leading scorer for the Seminoles. Relatively quiet night. But to be fair, I think you could say that for a number of players. It's been tough to get the looks that both teams, and I think especially BYU, have been accustomed to. Howell playing on a yellow card, as is Coolahan for BYU. Yuji Zhao on the corner of the box. Yet to see a defender force Madrill to go somewhere she doesn't want to go. <laughs> she decides. Payne brings it down nicely. Into the box, left through. Brown with a little bit of a slip. Olsen was behind her. Ellie Mon came back on for BYU. Maybe a little bit of fresh legs, Tucker. Offside. That offside flag took away what we thought was a goal by Tucker in the eighth minute way long ago of the match. Nothing since then. Brown. Being given a little bit of time and room to work with. Olsen just got herself tripped up. That's the perfect seam for Jody Brown to be running at that back line, though. Facing up with some space. Tucker, the target, offside again. And, and this is where you can get frustrated as a teammate. It's like, look around, right? Again, you have the pace to get in. Don't push that line. Fourth time tonight that Tucker has been called offside. It's getting quiet out here at Stevens Stadium. Crowd looking for a little something to wake them up. Most everybody agrees, a shootout, such a tough way to end a match, particularly to decide a championship. Will we decide it before then? Under seven minutes to play in this second overtime period. Jen Hildreth, former U.S. national team captain, Julie Foudy, our crew, happy to have you along. A little bit of overtime action in this NCAA Women's College Cup. And you can just see the fatigue. I mean, you're having to grind it out by now. I would imagine everyone grateful for that extra day not having to play yesterday as it was originally scheduled, but the NCAA honoring BYU's decision not to play on Sundays. So moving the championship match to tonight. Wade. Let's go to Brown now for Florida State. Nice recovery by Peterson, just to slow Brown down a little. Jalen Howell, and Herman Trophy winner, out to Payne. To the end line, she goes in the middle. Stepped in red by the Cougars. The drill again making that run all the way through on the ball in most of these situations. Space for Nice Wonger lets it go with her left foot. Big grab, big save by Smith. It's on that favored left foot for Jenna Nicewanger. We've seen her score just that in national finals. The 
Now she had the goal that gave Florida State the lead in the championship against Santa Clara last year, a lead that they held on to until late, I think it was the 83rd, 84th minute that the Broncos tied it up. It was a spinning image, too, of that position where she cut across, bent it with her left, tucked it in. Chance of BYU, though the Cougars having to play defense at the moment. Olsen tapping it back for Carl. Payne, not ready to look central yet. Now Brown, quick pass. Olsen, unable to get there. It's been a lot of Florida State in the second overtime period. Nice Wonger earns it again with her left foot, not on frame. BYU. Bella Felino into the match. Polino had a big Sometimes penalty kick in the shootout in the semifinal. Mozingo, Polino, and Wade, the three who Olivia stepped Wade. up and finished that shootout off for the Cougars against the Broncos. That along with a big save from Cassidy Smith. And allowing BYU to get here to its first ever national championship game. The last time Florida State was in a shootout was the national championship last year. Didn't end the way they wanted. They had a couple of misses in that one. Coolahan hasn't had many touches in overtime. Quick turn. Peterson. Brown defending Peterson across. A chance in the box. The engine on Kendall Peterson, who does not stop running down that sideline, is tremendous. She has had a game. She's had a, a season. Madrill, it's out of bounds. It is a corner for Florida State. How much do you have left in the tank? Again, the center back for Florida State, who's been all over the field. Good tackle by Vaca. Florida State has been close. Off the corner, another punch. Smith's been good. BYU wanting to go. Is this their opportunity to get forward? Come on. No. Just a fraction behind Mon. When that happens, that ball in from Tucker, it slows everyone's momentum. If Tucker maybe could have just played it into stride with Mon. One minute left. BYU on the attack. Coolahan is close to the goal as she's been all night, but Roque beats her to it. And that's the run we haven't seen as much from Coolahan. Out of midfield, a little too much pace on the ball. Doing a lot more defending than Coolahan typically does against a very good Florida State midfield. 24 seconds remaining. Vaca's played a tremendous game on that back line for BYU. And you have to think now, everybody mentally, physically, getting ready. Unless Florida State can generate something here in the final seconds, they will not. Grace Johnson snuffs that threat out. And so, once again, for the third straight year, 
We go to penalties to decide Let's our national go. champion. PKs, we come. Oh, well, here we are again for the national championship. Regulation, overtime, not enough. We're scoreless still. That will have to go down now, as it has the last two years, to a penalty kick shootout. In 2020, Santa Clara beating Florida State in the shootout. In 2019, it was Stanford taking down North Carolina. And get this, only four finals ever have gone to PKs. Crazy. But that includes the last three, including this year. So how will BYU come out this time? They had two misses on their first two attempts in their shootout in the semifinal against Santa Clara. And against all odds, came back to still advance out of that shootout and get here to this championship game. The confidence derived from just that. Yeah. You go down to, they lived through it, they survived it, they're through to the final. And now you're in that same position is gonna be something they dig into and have that well of confidence from. But on the other hand, your Florida State, no one has seen their penalty kicks, right? And they could say to their team, hey, we've seen BYU. We know where BYU's going. And they've got that in the back of their heads, meaning BYU's going up going, do I switch it? Yeah, do I go with what yeah. I did before? Do I change it up? Do they change the order? Do they stick with right. the same five, even though the first two who were leaders in Coolahan and Shepard didn't convert? Do you go the same way? These are all the things you're playing in your head. And as we know, so much of penalty kicks is just the confidence to step up and bury it. The mental confidence. Now, Florida State had been incredibly successful in the postseason prior to that championship game in the 2020 final. They had advanced in seven straight shootouts between the ACC and NCAA tournaments prior to that final. And interestingly, they also failed to convert their first two in that final last year. They, however, did not recover. So the two goalkeepers getting set. Getting some words from our referee, Christina Roque, for Florida State, Cassidy Smith. Last time she will be on a field for BYU, the seventh year senior who's been there since 2015. How about ending your seven year career with two penalty shootouts? So BYU is gonna go first. This answers one of our questions. They're gonna stick with Michaela Coulihan to lead them off despite her miss to start the shootout on Friday. Coulihan hit the crossbar, it bounced down. Originally we thought in, but it did not bounce in. That was her first miss off the crossbar. Roque, three saves in the NCAA tournament and shootout last year. Coolahan got it this time. It's a goal. Getting back on that saddle is the hardest part of it all. Coolly, calmly, same side she went before, except it hit the crossbar right in that same position. Roque goes the opposite way. Clara Robbins, now the shooter. One for one on the season from the spot for the Seminoles. She let off the shootout in the final last year, hit the post. Robbins in the corner, even at one. Jamie Shepard will go after, after this shot from Robbins in the corner. Cool and calm by both of our shooters to start things off. Coolahan had redemption, can Shepard do the same? Shepard had it saved, Roque. Advantage Florida State. The shot is no good. 
Shepard went right in the semifinal as well. Hit it with a little bit more pace, but right at the height that goalkeepers love. Right in the middles. The sweet spot for those goalkeepers. Don't have to get up high or down low. Heather Payne, the junior out of Ireland. We're getting a little bit of a boost from her goalkeeper. Can it turn into an advantage on the scoreboard? Yes, it does. You save your emotion on these, don't you? Really well done by Payne. Good pace. Driven low. Brecken Mazingo, her left foot, such a weapon, went different direction in the last shootout than the first two shooters. Does so again, and does it with authority. Oh my, the confidence. Uh, and again, they missed BYU, the first two penalty kicks in that semifinal and still came through, but still in that moment to step up and calmly hammer that one in. Well done by Mozingo. 2-2, two, two, we sit. Gabby Carl looking to put the Seminoles in front. Florida State has been perfect so far. Carl. Cassidy Smith reads it. It's far too central by Carl. She tries to use the stutter step to get her because Smith has been moving and jumping around there to try and get her to bite. Smith reads it all the way. Still a very good save by Cassidy Smith. Bella Foligno doesn't waste any time, and it is saved. It's no good. The goalkeepers stepping up for both teams. Bella Foligno hits it with enough pace, almost Eight catches Roque, who dives beyond it. Read that the whole State, way. Roque. Jalen Howell now stepping to the spot for Florida State. She had a miss from the penalty spot in the quarterfinal against Michigan. Howell into the net and Florida State back out in front. Great finish by Howell. State, one, Puts enough Rupin. pace on it, even though it is in an area where Smith can get enough pace on it that Smith doesn't have the time to reach out to that one. Has she done enough? A couple of saves from Christina Roque. Olivia Wade needs to make it here to keep BYU alive. She does! The pressure on that moment, stepping up, knowing you have to make this. A look into the eyes of goalkeeper Cassidy Smith as Yuji Zhao is the player who can win the national championship for Florida State. Zhao, wow, Florida State, national champions again. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 NCAA Division I Women's Soccer National Champions with a penalty kick decision of four to three, the Florida State Seminoles. After losing.
losing in penalty kicks, Florida State to Santa Clara and the last final, and this one coming down to the wire for them. Yuji Zhao, the senior from Shanghai, China, stepping up in this moment, stutter steps it, whips it in. A beautiful finish with confidence in a well-deserved national championship for Florida State. As tight as they come, this matchup, it is always so difficult. True elation on one side, absolute heartache on the other when you think about this historic run by BYU getting here for the first time, but what an incredible moment. The young goalkeeper, Christina Roque, two saves in that shootout. So, yeah, she's gonna get the player of the game again, brought to you by Buick.